the chemical formula. Okay, I'm just going to teach you a little bit of chemical formula because it is going to be useful for you. Oh, no. It's not going to be tested for the upcoming quiz, but having this knowledge actually puts you at an advantage. Okay, that's all I can say. Oh, my paper was here. <laughs> okay, let's begin. Alright, if you look at uh, page 85 of the textbook, if you look at page 85 of the textbook, the language of chemistry. Actually, to be very honest, perhaps I should have started with this. You kind of just dive into chemistry and you learn as you do it. Right? A lot of car and error here, but now I give you a little bit of background about how we do chemistry, how we write things out. In reality, when we look at chemistry as a language, we are quite lazy people. We want to write out the full name of chemical elements. And so one way about it is that we always replace it with short-term symbols. But you have thought, realized by now that not all elements quite have the symbol that you expect. What do I mean by that? For example, when we look at, let's say, for example, when you look at oxygen, <coughs> your chemical symbol is O. And you're like, this makes sense, right? It's a short form of it. Then you see nitrogen. Then the short the symbol is N. You're like, this makes sense. And then when it comes to magnesium, I notice that a lot of students write N. Right, because you follow the trend of only. But you notice that it's not always the case. You see that it ends up with an MG. It's still quite similar. If you look at your textbook, some of them don't quite follow what you expect. For example, when you look at sodium, one would expect that you write that, but it's not. You end up seeing an A. That's because some of the chemical symbols follow uh, other languages. We take a short form of other languages. For example, the Latin name of sodium is natrium. Then we take the Na from that. If we look at copper, the Latin name is cuprum. Then we take, that's where the Cu comes from. So every time you see a chemical symbol that doesn't quite match up with the English name, it is likely because it's in another language. Yes? But why another language? Why another language? Because English is not standard. They ran out of letters. That's a great question. See, why do you think so? They ran out of letters. They ran out of letters. That is one reason. You look at sodium, right? If I, if I use S, then my sulfur will have an issue also. Yes. So perhaps that's one of the reasons. Uh, I suspect also, sometimes since I'm Latin, because um, it could be they paying tribute to experiments that were done in that time, when Latin was still used. I honestly don't know. La. I'm, I'm trying to scope it out there. Okay, but uh, I have no idea why the reasons are like that. Why certain languages, why we stick to Latin. Some of them has good reasons. For example, uh, I'll have the example here. Okay, if you look at your textbook, uh, you look behind the periodic table. Some of them are named after planets. planets. So sometimes, based on the person that discovered the element, they name it whatever they want. Uh. Right? Let's say it makes time Valentina discovers a, an element is missing, Valentinium. Yeah. Hey, she have a lot of such thing or not? No. Valentinium? No. Valentinium? Yeah. Hey, wow, I just found out there's, no. there's this element called Liver Morium. I don't want to know where this comes from. <laughs> yeah. Liver Morium. <laughs> What's Liver Morium? Where is it? Uh, bottom right, 116. Do you see any names that are quite interesting? Uranium. Einsteinium. So like his name in tribute to Einstein, but it's not Einstein discovered. That's Italian. Uranium. 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 Americanium. Yeah. So some are named after countries. Uranium. 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 Americium. Hey, Germanium. You see Germanium? Californium. Californium. Yeah. Huh? Really? At the very bottom. That's a Californium. 98. 98. Whoa, what? I didn't even notice 
Because you're very scared. If you write CL this way, if you write your L a bit too short, right, you look like CI or something. Okay? So just so that you won't be spotted or misunderstood, write your L in a switch like that. So you got aluminium right in the switch. Okay? So can you rewrite it? This is typically how we will write it out so that there's no misunderstanding. That you're writing AI or CI. Hey, why are you so scared? Why are you laughing at that? Hao Yang is harassing Xavier. It's just Caleb. I think like the only one laughing is them, not us. See? Who asked you so funny? Go ahead. I asked you like, really, really want to have kids. After that, after I made you all right. Oh my god. How I okay, right, right, right. 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 Sometimes I make you all right. I can't do that. If I would have kids, right, I really, really want a daughter. No, Mr. Tan. Hey, if I get a son, right, I'm like, Mr. Tan. Can I pull up for adoption or something? Abortion is an option. You don't want to have kids because you worry that your kid cannot be as fun as us. Mr. Tan, if, if you ever get a son, you can just go and buy milk. Ah? Oh. Hey, 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 Run away from your problem. No. <laughs>
we go on to page 87, actually you've done this before already. We've, we've done this way before. We go to the chemical formula of ionic compounds. You've already learned how to write the chemical formula of ions. Actually, you've done it a long time ago. Okay, so let's do a quick practice. Can you write down the chemical formula for all the ions in table 6.5? a quick recap. How do you tell how many, how, what's the charge? You go and look at the periodic table. Find out which group it's in, so you know how much valence electrons are present. They need to remove or gain. Okay, what's that? I'll talk to your friends, show them your answer, <coughs> discuss, double check. Once done, just double check with your friends. If you have not committed yet, don't look up yet. Huh? We don't look up yet. Yeah? Okay. Can you check the charges? Okay, let me just show the first few then. Double check your charges. Make sure that you have the correct number. Is it 2 minus? Is it...
notice that there is the numeral, Roman numeral for seven, for six, as well as for six, right? Right, for me, six ion. Notice that when you look at that, it doesn't quite match up with the chart. Yeah? Okay, so for these three particular ions, the numbers have no relationship to the chart, right? Huh? Okay? So, unfortunately, for these three ions, we need to be able to memorize them. But then the ones on top in that table, all the positive ions, whenever you see all these charges, you see the Roman numerals, it matches the chart. Okay, so these are the charges. Okay, don't be shocked if we were to ever show you lead 2 salt, uh, lead 2 chloride. Okay, if we write lead 2 chloride, then you know that this particular lead ion is a PV2 plus version. So I'll give you an example of what you can encounter. You may see something like that. Lead 2 chloride. Or I may write lead. Compound, it will be quite different. So if you see lead 2 chloride, you will see PB and Cl. Now need two of it to complement the PB ion. Because the PB is PB2 plus. Here is PB4 plus. So for lead 4 chloride, what would the chemical formula be? You want to try? Okay, what would the chemical formula? For lead 4 chloride, this ionized compound B. Given that the ion here is PB4 plus. PBCL4. Okay, thank you, Sheila. Okay, so it's PBCL4. Okay, so this is an example of how uh, this would be useful to you. Okay, when we give you this number there, it will help you out early. Okay, you see the table below on page 88? Uh, earlier on in the MCQ for Kabul, you encounter a word polyatomic ion. The word poly means many. The word atomic means atoms. Polyatomic ions are ions that are made up of many atoms. You will encounter all of these in the table. So after the quiz, uh, after the quiz, you are expected to memorize them. Okay? After this quiz, you are expected to be able to remember all of these polyatomic ions. After the quiz, so before the quiz already. Yeah, before, okay, so what I'm saying here is before the, when the quiz they are going for, you will not encounter polyatomic ions. Okay? But beyond this quiz, for your end of year, you are expected to memorize the polyatomic ions by then. I really have no quick way around this. Uh, why memorize? You will encounter these polyatomic ions in pH 2, pH 3. PH4, SH1, SH2. So you have five years more to remember these polyatomic ions. You will see them again and again and again. And usually I find by year three, you don't need to memorize. You use it so often until it's there in your head already. Yeah? I don't memorize it anymore, it's just in, in me already. Yeah? Okay, that's a bit weird, but. Okay, so polyatomic ions. The real difficulty is in doing activity C. Or maybe I always underestimate our class. Okay, actually maybe it's not as difficult. Okay, if I were to want to form compounds using polyatomic ions, can you write out the chemical formula? That is the real challenge here. But a challenge that I think you are very capable of overcoming. Yes. What about three elements? How do you put like the names together? Three elements. Yeah, because there's like zinc, sulfur, and oxygen. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So let me run through an example. Everyone look to page 89. Okay. We'll try to complete activity C and then we'll go up. Okay. So I'll give you one example. Look at the zinc one. You see zinc, and then there's sulfur, and then there's oxygen. Okay. How do we name this ionic compound? Okay. The moment you find that there are more than two elements present, there's a high chance that there's a polyatomic ion somewhere in there. Okay, I'm gonna write that on the whiteboard, huh? Right. Yeah, write down what I just said. 
Here's a tip. If you find <laughs> a compound with more than one element, sorry, more than two elements, there's a high chance that body atomic ion is present. I don't know why I said body. If you find more than two elements, there's a high chance that the polyatomic ion is present. Ooh. Notice every time you done, only one with two elements. All the ions compounds in this so far say two elements. So we have two. If you find anything more than two, it's a very good chance that the polyatomic ion is present. That's why you need to be able to memorize the table over there. Look into the table. Can you identify the polyatomic ion that exists in this particular compound? Okay, look into the table now. Can you find the polyatomic ion that exists within that zinc compound? If you can, then you already know the name of that ion. Then you can write out the name of the ionic compound. Here's a clue. The name of the ionic compound that zinc one will sound like that. It will be A blank. A zinc something. But what is that something? Zinc something. Can you find out what you will fill in the blank with? If you think you found it, can you share with your friends? Can you share on your table what is that blank? Zinc what? Based on the table on page 88, you can find the information there. Zinc what? Zinc what? For those that are a bit quicker, if you want to, you can complete the other three rows. Find the ions that exist, then write out the chemical formula. Identify the polyatomic ion that exists by using the table on page 88.